I just trained my computer to do natural language processing using BERT. Let's test it on positive and negative movie reviews. Hmm, that one seemed like it was positive, and we got a positive result. How about this? What a waste of time this movie was. Can't believe I spent 20 bucks on that. That's a negative review. Looks like we're doing well so far. The movie was pretty good, but I didn't like the ending. Oh, well, that's a negative review, and I think we are on a roll here. That was a positive review. Okay, let's try something a little more challenging. How about that director? Really outdid himself this time. Okay, so that is a negative review. And uh, let's put in some words we don't know. That's a meh movie. That's a negative review. That sounds about right. Looks like we are good there. What a thriller. Okay, that one looks like it's wrong. And it is our first misclassification. This was an excellent example of post-apocalyptic fiction. That one looks like it is a positive review, and that is what we got back there. How about something a little more complicated? We'll use some words like lukewarm and things like that. It's a negative review, but only just a negative review. Let's see if we get that. Looks like it did. It classified it as a negative review. How about the best and worst movies? Those look like they're working correctly. What you're witnessing is the power of natural language processing in artificial intelligence using the BERT model. I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. This episode, we go back to our AI playlist and we're gonna take a look at BERT. And now BERT is for bi-directional encoding and it's going to help us do some natural language processing or NLP. And what are we gonna do in our first project? Well, we're gonna do some sentiment analysis where we take a bunch of movie reviews and we're gonna classify those into positive or negative reviews. In our first pass, we're gonna use TinyBERT, and then we're gonna move up to a small BERT implementation, which is a bit more powerful, and we're gonna see the differences between those two. I hope you enjoy this series for this playlist. Let's get to it. Okay, so you might be wondering, well, what are we going to do in this series? And the answer to that is that we are going to train a computer to understand language in order to do a classification. And in this case, it's a very simple classification of positive or negative movie reviews. And how are we gonna do that? Well, we are going to use a language model in machine learning, and we're gonna train that model based off of some test data that we're gonna download from Stanford University. All of the technologies that we're gonna use in this series are free to download and use, so you should be able to do these tasks on your computer. And what is the model that we're going to use? Well, it's called BERT and that stands for bidirectional encoder representations from transformers which is a mouthful but it's a language model that's based on the transformer architecture and that model was originally published by google researchers devlin chang lee and tudanova and when bert first arrived on the scene in 2019 it was very quickly one of the most powerful natural language processing models that you could use and in this series, we're going to test out two of the BERT models, the smaller ones, uh, since those can run more easily on a single computer. And the first one will be TinyBERT, and we'll see what kind of results we get with TinyBERT, which is a, a small, uh, a very small BERT uh, implementation that allows you to run on limited hardware. And then we'll run small BERT, which is a little bit more powerful. And we're gonna also run that on our local computer using our G. GPU. Now, if you have an NVIDIA video card that supports machine learning, that's going to help a lot with this task. It will make your training go much more quickly. Now, you might be wondering at this point, well, what do I need in order to do this series? Well, you're going to need a computer. You can actually do this on a Linux computer as well as a Windows computer uh, or a Mac if you want. And in my case, I'm using Windows and I'm using TensorFlow 210, mostly because that will allow me to to run this natively on my video card uh, using Windows, but if you want to use a newer version, you can also do that using uh, Windows WSL. You will also need to download and install Python if you don't have Python yet. Um, I'm using Python 3.10, uh, and you can download the version that you'd like to use from the Python site, www.python.com 
org slash downloads and after you install Python you can start your Windows command shell and you can run the commands for pip which is the installer for Python and you'll need to run these pip commands to get these libraries for this series. Now you can do all of your coding inside of idle uh, using the idle shell plus some scripts that you can create there. Um, in my case I have downloaded and installed notepad plus plus which is a fantastic download if you do not have it yet I encourage you to download and install that since we will be programming Python files and we will not be running them them inside of idle we'll actually be running them from the Windows command line as idle is not well suited to running these kind of tasks for machine learning if you like you can also download and install a Jupyter notebook and you can do much of the coding in Jupyter notebook however on my channel I focus more on operationalization of these tasks and so we'll be designing a little bit closer to the hardware running scripts right in Python itself but you can choose how you'd like to do some of these tasks. Next what you'll need to do is create yourself a directory that you'd like to develop in and also familiarize yourself with the command line in Windows. If you're unsure of how to get that you can just go to your search bar and type in CMD and hit enter and you should get a little black window that pops up. We'll be using that in order to execute our Python scripts. As for the test data you don't need to worry about downloading that manually since we'll be including a command in our Python scripts to download that and do the unpacking and all of that kind of stuff. Now as an option you probably want to install CUDA on your machine which is NVIDIA's machine learning library if you have a NVIDIA graphics card since it will allow you to use that massive parallelization that you need in order to do machine learning tasks. Not that you can't do them just using your CPU, but the graphics card makes things go much, much faster. If you are interested in that, make sure to check out this video that I did about installing CUDA. And if you want to run this natively on Windows, you need to make sure you download the right versions of CUDA and TensorFlow. Uh, those two need to be the right versions in order to run natively on Windows. Uh, but you can also run things in WSL using newer versions of TensorFlow and CUDA as I understand it. So you can research those and install those if you want to. As I said, those are an option. I'm super jazzed to be starting this playlist with you guys on natural language processing. Really looking forward to it. If you could train a computer for language tasks, what kind of application would you build? Need time collection for your staff and contractors out in the field? Make sure to check out my Bills on System. The link is in the description.